What's going on, guys? Roma the Roma here. I'll show you guys my book haul. So I went on Facebook Marketplace, drove about 30 minutes. I got all these books. Check them out. They're homeschooled books. So I'm not really sure how great they're going to be, but I'm sure I scan a couple and there's you know, a $20 profit book here, $20 profit book there. But I mean, she wanted $20 per box. And then I negotiated it down to $10 a box. And then she negotiated it back up to about $11.53 or something. But anyway, that's a pretty good haul. It's going to keep us busy for about 30 minutes because we're so good at processing books. I'll show you guys how we process all these books right now. So I got this storage unit. I'm so, I'm so hyped about this storage unit. What's going on, color guy? It is going today. I need to get my key to the storage unit. So... All I did to get these books was go on Facebook Marketplace and this, she was actually a bookseller herself and she was looking to get out of the business. And she, um, you know, I called her up. I, I always, you know, try to talk to people before, especially for bigger deals like this. I'm picking up a lot of books and, you know, just talk to her a little bit. And another benefit of doing that is now I have her phone number. And in the future, since she's out of the business, she spent years and years and years developing uh, connections with, with, you know, not only interested buyers, but also, you know, homeschool uh, people. So whenever she comes across lots of books, she's going to contact me and I will nag her for a while. I'll keep, I'll keep messaging her time and time again, because this business is all about building relationships. Ask the clutter guy who just commented about that. He knows it's all about relationships. He's, he's building, he's a monster. He's building lots of relationships with libraries. And that's a good person to have a relationship with when you're in the book business, because libraries have lots of books and they, they're always going to have books coming to them. So what I'm about to do is I'll take all these books out of my car and you'd be surprised how many books we've pushed in here and pushed out. I like to think of it as my storage unit throws up. Like all these books, we just push a lot of books in here and all of a sudden they all come out. We open up the store and a lot of people, there's probably about four or five people that stop by and I have two um, listers that really go hard and Everything on, on these shelves right here needs to be listed. So this is all the good stuff, okay? Most of this stuff either needs to be processed, it's not good, so it does. But all this stuff right here is the good stuff, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll take all these books, push them all in there. We're gonna go through them. We're probably gonna have to use a lot of the Amazon seller app um, because a lot of these don't even have ISBN, so even using the new OCR technology that Scout IQ has isn't really going to, it's not going to help us too much. So we're going to, we'll, we'll probably just stack these up. I got two tables. They actually get the top storage unit, but we'll, we'll put the tables out. We'll stack all these cover up. All these have pretty distinct covers. So if you look here like that. So what we'll be able to do is just stack it, cover up. We have not really great Wi-Fi out here. I'm not sure how this connection is working with YouTube Live right now. But we have a good enough connection to, to use the Amazon Seller app. It'd be better if we had Wi-Fi. But we got to work with what we got. So that's what's going on. I'll show you guys a little bit more. Got this broken pallet jack back here. Need to fix that. Um, so we also have this supplies box. So we're starting to make this, you know, we got put all the supplies in here. If, if a lister, you know, if she has too much supplies at her house, she'll come and put them back here and then people will need to take it. So, um, a lot of times people ask me, you know, Avery, why aren't you in retail arbitrage? You know, why aren't you venturing out? Why are you so obsessed with books? And it's because books in my opinion are very scalable. I could have had someone else today go pick up those books. And I'm not saying retail arbitrage is not scalable, but books are obviously scalable to me for a lot of different reasons but there's like a surplus of books otherwise I wouldn't make these videos you know I don't tell you guys everything I don't tell you guys, I don't tell you guys where I get all my books there's some leads where I wouldn't want to you know bring it out in public where I got my books but Facebook marketplace there's always there's so many books available I'm not gonna be able to get all of them I can't get the books in Oklahoma unless it's a really good lead I might drive out there if I see you know you have 1300 textbooks I get in my Toyota Corolla and drive across the country. That wouldn't be the first time I did that. I've been here for three months, guys. That's actually how I started selling books. 
but yeah, there, there's so much, so much opportunity out there. If you guys like this video, like, subscribe, comment, dislike it, do what you got to do. Be honest. Let's get into some Q&A real quick. Hey, Romer, can you give an idea or why the need for a storage unit and shelf when you're doing Amazon FBA? I figured you'd be following the FIFO first in, first out system. So wouldn't need the storage. Is FIFO, is that like an engineering term or is that an Amazon term? I've never actually heard that, but okay. This is a really good question. We are, and this actually goes, I kind of forgot to finish my thought about why I'm doing books and not retail arbitrage. Um, and this kind of ties into that. So we are so spoiled as Amazon sellers to have fulfillment by Amazon. We literally have a workforce of reliable people and we complain about them losing books and stuff, but the defect rate I think is pretty low. I don't get, and plus they always reimburse you if you ask them to give your money back for whatever books they lost. We are so spoiled as Amazon sellers to have people, they, they store your books, they ship them out, they do all that, okay? So as booksellers, all we have to do is get books, list them, and ship them out. That's all we have to do. And then reprice them or whatever. We don't, we don't have to manage customer service. We don't have to fulfill the order directly to the customer. We don't have to deal with returns. We don't have to do any of this, okay? So we forget that all of that is... I, I did hear that they recently are talking about making like fulfilled by eBay or something similar. But if you want to scale an eBay business, you have to figure all that shit that FBA normally does for you. You got to figure that out yourself. Which I'm not saying it's the worst thing to figure it out yourself. Like, it, it's good to strengthen that muscle of delegation. But just because fulfillment by Amazon exists, like, we were forced to delegate all that. Um, in a way, you, you could look at it as that. Like, we were forced to delegate, um, you know, shipping directly to the customer. We we're And I, I think it's a good thing, but I think it also weakens a lot of entrepreneurials, onto entrepreneurs, um, delegation muscle because now they're not thinking how can I get other people to do stuff for me which is the way if you actually want to build a business that you can remove yourself from that's how you want to be thinking so the reason why I have this storage unit is all those shelves right there make it super easy for people to open up open up my unit and all they all the books that need to be listed and take them to their house now I removed myself from listing because I, I have a goal of, of 500,000. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to send out you know, 150, 200 books a day. If I'm, if I'm listing all those books, that's going to take a large chunk of my day. So I'm going to pay someone else to list them instead. So Jeff Bezos doesn't, he doesn't make it possible for him to list all of our books for us. We have to do that part. So that this is where you strengthen your delegation muscle by saying, okay, for $12 an hour, could I hire someone to do this? And in those, in that hour, how much money could I make going out and finding more books? And then eventually what you want to do is find a way for books to come to you or have like Facebook marketplace. You guys can scale it like this. Have someone go. I know a guy in New York who's crushing it. He just passed me an inventory. And he's only been selling for like two months. Shout out Hello Kitty Girl. If you're watching this. Um, I said him, it is him, um, but he runs this account called Hello Kitty Girl on Instagram. He's a funny dude. Anyway, he just has someone go running routes for him and he uses Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and he's got books coming to him now. I don't think he's got the whole listing thing delegated yet. I did it reverse. He did it reverse for me, you know, but those are the two pieces of the puzzle that we have to deal with. We have to deal with getting books, listing books, and that's about it. Amazon kind of does everything else. So... That's a very long answer for that question. Let's see what else we got. Full-time, part-time. You got a different name on each platform, but you always coming in with the Romy Room. I love it. Bill says, Boss Talk. Bleak. YT says, what's up? Let's see what else. who else we got in here. Um, oh, it's an accounting term. FIFO. FIFO, okay. Took that last semester, he said. I probably sold you your textbook. Kenjo51, what's good? My first subscriber in the house. How Scott IQ is OCR. Scoutly is buggy as fuck. I've never used such a cool. I love it. Hey, Romer. 
I learned how to hustle from you. How was your sales for July? Did uh, did it increase or decrease from before? It's always increasing. My sales are always going up just because I have a sales goal of 500,000 this year. And I'm playing catch up at this point because I'm only at 20,000 this month and it's the very end of the month. So I need, I need to be getting up to you know, 60, 70, 80 plus by the end of the year to really um, hit that 500,000 goal. So it's always going up. August is gonna be huge just because of textbook season. September will be huge. And then I'm really gonna to have to grind to get my inventory up to even make October bigger than those previous two months, which is possible. I just have to really work hard. Um, Blake says, sold an access code from an old textbook I never used today. Yeah, nice. You can sell access codes. Access codes, it's it's really crazy selling them because it, it just feels like you're selling nothing. And you can sell them for a lot. They're so light. Are you going to partner up with, with my college trade 100% profit program? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Is that Bill? Are you Bill from... Are you Bill Martlink? He says Bill Sokol. Are you, are you, are you the sell back your books guy? <laughs> um, how much would you pay a scouter to find books? Funny you asked that. Me and my buddy are actually uh, kind of dishing it out right now. He's going to come help me this weekend, and um, we're working out on what to pay him. I like paying per hour, $12 an hour here in Tennessee. It's what you can get away with. Um, but I also like per book because it motivates people. Um, tomorrow I have a friend going to a library sale, and my sister's going to help me at a different library sale. I'm paying them both $40, um, but I also like the model of paying a dollar per book and then I'll cover the cost of the inventory. Um, or you could do two or three dollars per book. I've done three dollars a book and they cover the cost of inventory. So essentially I'm buying the books from them. So they're paying a dollar for books. If they get a hundred books in a day, I'll pay 300 for them. Boom, it's made 200 bucks. What's good, Hayden? What's going on, man? Can LOL trading college kids Tylenol? Oh, <laughs> for textbooks because they believe it's Adderall. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Post some videos on Instagram about that. See how that, see how that works for you. <laughs> I'm sure someone's done it before. How do you handle books with no rank? I don't send them in. If it's got no rank, it means it's never sold. Unless it's like a $300 book and I feel like it's mispriced and I have faith that I could sell it, I don't mess with it. And again, I'm only in this for two years, guys. I'll let, talk to me in 10 years, and when you ask me these questions, I know a little bit more, but I'm not even interested in messing with stuff like that, um, like creating listings or or really trying to like monetize books that don't have listings because I know my time is best spent just sending in more books FBA. But once I get to the point where I have so many books I can't deal with and I have all my systems in place, I'll take a step back and be like, okay, well, what if we implemented – you know what you just said and we're able to um, squeeze out a little bit more profit from creating our own listing or, or hopping on books that uh, have no rank and then we'll we'll learn a little bit from there if you guys are enjoying this hit the like button i always forget to say that but hit that like button it uh it helps the algorithm and it validates my ego so both of those are really good really good things <laughs> Are you going to transition to wholesale or private label potentially? Um, being able to process lots of gay Gaylords in these storage units is giving me, uh, it's forcing me to put systems in place that could be compatible with wholesale. I would probably go with private label though, because I can, um, I'm basically wholesaling books now. I know it's not the same terminology, but I'm getting, buying books in bulk. Got another eight Gaylords today. Got through three of them in a hot warehouse, yeah. And that's Texas heat. Yeah, I'm out here in Tennessee heat. And we did about two and a half three a day in a couple hours. We knocked him out. So good shit. Uh, legit question. I met a guy who was having a big time trouble with Amazon because he bought and sold a counterfeit textbook. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually my biggest nightmare. You hear my voice crack. Nightmare. I'm all scared about getting restricted in textbooks. Um, it's true. And if you guys actually have a way of not getting, or at least, um, let me think about a phrase this, it protects you from getting gated in textbooks. I can't, I can't dish out all the details on this live stream, but if you guys are interested in that, the best way to hit me up is in the Instagram, 
DMs. Um, yeah, or Facebook. But Instagram DMs I'm the most active on. Um, I probably, if, if you comment or email me, my email will be below after this. But if you're interested in that, um, let me know. Are, is the, is the I, I have pretty bad service out here. Can you guys hear me good? Because someone's asking about the internet. Um, do you guys list right from the storage unit? No. No. So again, I guess people are just joining this, but all the books on this side of the unit are good to be listed. Someone actually comes here, opens up my unit, takes them back to their house, lists them there, and then schedules a pickup from their house. So, can you just hang up? You guys can hear me good. If you hire book scouters, you cover. So I use Scout IQ team mode, and it's 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 super 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 cool. So what you can do is you can actually change the triggers. So let's say someone's going to my storage unit and they're like, yo, you know, I got your login information. I'll, I'll provide them with a the login. I'd be like, my, my login is, you know, grasshopper and my password is grasshopper123. And so they'll go ahead and they'll log in. And if they're in a storage unit and they're scanning books that I've already bought, I want to lower my profit threshold. So I've created a set of triggers that work for that. It's called Gaylord. So boom, hit the Gaylord triggers. It's associated with that account. So they can log into the, that account and now it's associated with the proper trigger set. I can literally change their triggers from either my phone. I, you, you can change it from your phone now. It used to just be from your laptop, but you can actually go on scoutiq.co and change it from your phone. So then if you go to a bookstore or Goodwill nearby and they're like, hey, I'm headed over here. I can be like, oh shit, hold on one second. I could change their trigger set. Or I could also just provide them with a different login because I have about three accounts right now. And Scout IQ is seriously the superior app because of this. Scoutly will probably copy them pretty soon. Um, Scoutly is just perks too. Like I'm not gonna try and be super biased about this. Scoutly has a media database you can download, which is awesome if you're a media guy. So th there's perks to both of these, but Scoutly for the bookseller, it's it's really the superior app now because of that. And also this is a real reason why it's superior. Superior is you can, let's say I log into Scout IQ here. And then let's say I'm going hard one day and I have like five people that want to scan books for me. You know, someone in Indianapolis wants to go, you know, whatever, whatever they're doing. I, I have a bunch of different hustles for people to want to log into my Scout IQ account. The cool thing is you can't have, you can't log in both at the same time. Right. So if I'm on the Grasshopper account, it'll force log me off if someone else logged in. Right. But the cool thing is if I use that Grasshopper account in the morning, someone else can use it that night. So as long as you're not using it at the exact same time, um, it, it's not going to like what Scoutly did. And they may have gotten better. This is back when they were called FBA scan. But the reason why they really pissed me off is because they force logged me off one time because I, I had someone in New Jersey go out and scan books for me and I was in Northern California and they let me my account inactive for like a day because it took them forever to email me back and you have to like explain yourself you have to explain why you broke the rules and your app and I don't just be saying shit I mean it Scout Lee's triggers seem super conservative compared to Scout IQs. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. And, and, and let me know what you guys think. Making a video of like a Scout Lee, Scout IQ comparison. Because I'd actually be interested in myself. And we just have a stack of books and see like, see kind of what's going on. Like what's really the difference. And because you have the triggers, but then you also have the stuff behind the scenes of the triggers. And Scout Lee allows you to manipulate more of those. Um, Scout IQ is more set in stone. But... Honestly, I'd rather have it more set in stone because Caleb Roth, the creator of that app, is super smart. So he's really thought these things out. Like when it comes to, is it comparing against used buy box or is it comparing against Amazon price? You can you can change those things. But there there, there is some stuff behind the scenes that, that he's really thought out and trusted, dude. Let's see what else. On Gaylords, how many books are winners percent wise? Um, I have really, really bad Gaylords, and since we're getting kind of later into the video, if you watched it this far, you can know a little bit, a little bit of a secret, but I have a way of monetizing my duds, and I take a lot of them to local bookstores and get, uh, get cash for them. So, 
Um, I'm not too concerned with the accept rate because the duds will pay for themselves. Um, but about four to six percent accept. So not entirely great. I know. I'm working once I get a once I get a bulk source where I can yield anything over ten percent. You best believe I'm, I'm gonna do my best to keep that source happy forever. I'm testing Scoutly now, and I agree. Probably will switch back to Scout IQ after the free trial. Does um, if, you, if you can answer this, does Scoutly have team mode yet? Because that's that's really one of the reasons why I love Scout IQ. Anyway, that's it for questions, guys. This haul is pretty nice, so it's gonna keep us busy for the weekend and we got a lot, a lot of other things going on hustling a lot I'm throwing lots of darts I'm uh, tasting a lot of different things right now you know I'm, I'm, I'm cherry picking I'm doing bulk I'm pulling restricted inventory from you guys if you guys want to send me restricted inventory uh, instructions are below if you if you guys just want to dispose your restricted inventory to my place and when I say restricted inventory I mean restricted textbooks or DC comics those two things I'll sell those for you at a 50 50 split um, pulling books from students, going on Facebook Marketplace, pulling books, lots of things going on. So you guys, unsubscribe, do what you got to do. Peace out.